Topping today's news, the Prime Minister delivers a national address on illegal migration and shanty towns. The official opposition calls for a select committee to look into the solutions to the illegal migration problems. The country records its 19th murder for the year during a crime-filled weekend and two traffic fatalities here in the capital on the weekend. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. A comprehensive plan to address irregular migration and irregular housing in the Bahamas has been presented. Prime Minister Philip Davis, in a national address on Sunday evening, acknowledged the need to tackle the immigration problem is urgent as he pledged action on disrupting the flow of migrants to the Bahamas through a newly introduced program called Operation Secure. JCN's Lissy Bastian has more in this next report. We cannot have shanty towns on our islands. They are unsafe, a hazard to public health. They are against the law and they directly impact our way of life. Our priority is decisive action based on the laws of our land. It's against that backdrop that the government has implemented a national policy framework on immigration to address the various challenges the Bahamas faces when it comes to irregular migrants and irregular housing. Bahamians have grown understandably impatient over the immigration crisis and the need to tackle the issue is urgent, so says Prime Minister Philip Davis as he addressed the nation last evening. The Prime Minister announced Operation Secure, a security collaboration between the Royal Bahamas Defense and Police Forces and the Department of Immigration. As he says, for more than a year, the government has worked to satisfy legal requirements of the Supreme Court so that his administration can take more aggressive action on shanty towns. Operation Secure comes on the heels of Supreme Court Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson recently lifting an injunction placed on the demolition of shanty towns since 2018. For years, the court's injunction has stood in the way of concerted action on unregulated and illegal communities. But on Friday, the 10th of February, our application to have the injunction discharged was successful, paving the way for the government to act. Following the removal of the injunction, we immediately launched Operation Secure to address security and migration-related issues in unregulated and unlawful communities. The operation is focused on identifying irregular migrants, documented migrants, and Bahamians living in these communities, and addressing their status in a comprehensive and coordinated manner. With mounting protests by activists for the government to act on illegal migration, Prime Minister Davis pledged action on those communities, forewarning documented migrants living in unregulated communities to relocate, which comes at their own expense or that of their employers, or face repatriation. Even Bahamians found living in these communities will need to relocate. Prime Minister Davis also pledged to hold accountable the network of persons who make these shanty towns possible. Through Operation Secure, we will prevent the exploitation and abuse of migrants by unscrupulous landowners and businesses holding accountable those with a reckless disregard for our laws. Operation Secure targets those entering our borders illegally as well as any Bahamian citizen or legal resident who is breaking our laws. If you are a Crown land holder who is unlawfully leasing land, you will be prosecuted. If you are engaged in human smuggling, you will be prosecuted. And if you are employing migrants illegally, you will be prosecuted. Prime Minister Davis says his administration will have a zero-tolerance policy for anyone seeking to break or circumvent the laws of the country. He also promised more boots on the ground in the fight against illegal migration. We depend on the skill and professionalism of our uniform officers. At this point, I wish to thank the Commodore of the Defense Force, the Commissioner of Police, the Director of Immigration, 
and all their officers for their service. To support the successful execution of Operation Secure, we will continue to recruit more immigration officers and consideration is being given for the construction of a new detention center on the island of Inagua so that migrants who are detained anywhere in the Bahamas can be repatriated without the need to travel to New Providence. As Operation Secure addresses the situation on the ground, we are investing heavily in protecting our borders. Now, the three pillars of the National Policy Framework on Immigration include, one, emphasis on enforcing immigration laws in unregulated and unlawful communities, two, focus on protecting the country's borders, and three, international cooperation. For JCN News, I'm Lissy Bastian. Thanks for that report, Lissy. Following the question and answer session in Parliament on Monday morning, leader of the official opposition, Michael Pintard, made a communication to the House members where he informed members that the opposition is set to call for two select committees, the first of which is a select committee to address the illegal immigration and shantytown issues, which he describes as a crisis. We hear more in this next report. While calling for the first of two select committees as they resumed regular order of business in the House of Assembly this morning, leader of the official opposition, Michael Pintar described the illegal migration problem as an obstacle to national development and a degradation to the quality of life for Bahamians. He then explained why a select committee to help address the problem is important at this time. We believe, as members of the opposition, that it is important that the government looks at how all of us can work collaboratively in order to address this crucial issue, which is one of many. We believe that one of the mechanisms that can assist us is the establishment of a select committee. Madam Speaker, that has the authority to examine all of those areas of our national life that intersect with this particular challenge. Mr. Pintard says the government must not allow unrest in Haiti to destabilize the Bahamas. He believes the work of a select committee will help to prevent this. This mechanism of parliament that increases the participation of our citizens, critiques and improve policies, and help ministries to know better how we might improve their operation in the real world and what needs to change in order to make things better. Madam Speaker, the committee will give citizens an opportunity to express their views based on their first-hand experiences. We will have a chance to carefully examine all of those departments that impact the implementation, not just the implementation, the formulation of immigration and migration policies. Mr. Pintard says the proposed select committee would seek the help of the general public and experts from various segments of society to successfully carry out its mandate. Madam Speaker, the rules all the way through, which will be addressed in greater detail by the member for St. Anne's and other members, gives us the power, Madam Speaker, to call persons, to call ministers, whether it's those persons in the defense force, whether it's persons in the Department of Immigration, whether it's, the, it's those committees, Madam, Madam Speaker, that's responsible for uh, examining who enters our borders and whether or not they have left on a timely basis. This select committee, in the full light of day, are able to address a whole range of issues. Mr. Pintar then mentioned a list of more than a dozen items he described as critical to solving the illegal migration problem, including an audit of work permit holders and their employers, greater scrutiny of the visa, permanent residency, and citizenship processes, a determination to find out exactly how many illegal migrants are in the country and whether they came by boat or legally by airplane and overstayed their time. He also said the committee would look into corruption in the Immigration Department and any other department related to migration, as well as addressing the shantytown issues, among other things. With the 44th CARICOM Heads of Government meeting now behind us, Minister for Foreign Affairs and the Public Service, Fred Mitchell, has given a general overview regarding what took place at the high-level meetings, which he deemed a success. Trudeau came in, of course, uh, from Canada and met the heads of government of the CARICOM region, and they agreed on the way forward with Haiti. So this is a good result for the region. Secondly, we came to some agreements on what's going to happen at COP28 in the fall, in Dubai about climate change, which for the Caribbean and the Bahamas is existential. 
and there were agreements on uh, food security and energy security. So all in all, a successful conference. I wish to thank all the heads of government and their foreign ministers and the, their officials who came. I'm happy that they enjoyed themselves and they were safe and secure during the entire time of their visit, which is the responsibility of the Bahamas government. As it relates to the headline-grabbing action by the Coalition of Independence leader Lincoln Bain and his supporters who sought to hold the protest as Caribbean leaders gathered at Bahama Resort, Minister Mitchell underlined the importance of security matters, making reference to an incident happening within a neighboring Caribbean country. As a democratic society faces, there's the question of the security of your guests. You'll see that uh, on Friday there was a riot in, in Suriname where, as a result of a public demonstration, the police were overwhelmed. They trashed the parliament and attacked some of the parliamentarians and people inside the parliament. What was discovered, it is alleged, during this past week is that someone or some persons under assumed names who were known demonstrators and activists one of whom had fired weapons into the air and therefore was a security threat in the country, indicated that they were going to lead a demonstration of some kind. Now, there's no problem with demonstrations or any of that sort of stuff. I mean, there are laws which govern that. But when the police discovered that there was a breach of the security cordon, that requires a certain response to protect our... On Friday, Mr. Bain and 17 others were arrested and were arraigned in the magistrate's court, pleading not guilty to the charges of unlawful assembly, idle assembly, disorderly behavior, resisting arrest, and assault of a police officer. The group of 17 was granted bail, and they are set to return to court in the month of May. Another man is in police custody following threats of death made towards the nation's leader. Police on Sunday revealed that sometime around 8.20 a.m. on Saturday, death threats were made via a telephone call that was received at the Central Police Station towards Prime Minister Philip Davis. Police arrested an adult male who is currently assisting police with their investigations. Police also say they seized a technological device for evidential purposes. This is the third time that a death threat has been made uh, in regards to Prime Minister Philip Davis for the month. On February 3rd, two phone calls were made to the office of the Prime Minister threatening his life. Nearly a week later, police arrested a 58-year-old male of Carmichael Road in relation to those threats. Meanwhile, in relation to the latest death threat of the Prime Minister Philip Davis, a young man of Eastern New Providence faced the magistrate today. The man, believed to be responsible for this latest alleged death threats against Prime Minister Davis, appeared before Chief Magistrate Joyanne Ferguson Pratt to answer to the charges. 22-year-old Isaac Roberts pleaded not guilty to those charges. Preliminary reports say that on Saturday, like we said before, around 8.20 in the morning, he made the call to the police department and uh, they recorded him and they were able to find him. Following their investigation, Mr. Roberts was shortly arrested. In addition, police also seized, again, a technical technological device as uh, their evidence. He will return to court on Thursday for a bail hearing. A 51-year-old male has become the country's 19th homicide victim for 2023, gunned down on the porch of his home in the area of Kenilworth Avenue, South Beach, in the early hours on Sunday morning. Police say around 1.30 a.m., a family member was alerted to the sounds of gunshots, and on making checks outside the residence, they found the victim lying on the front porch suffering from gunshot injuries. He was transported to hospital via a private vehicle. However, he succumbed to his injuries. It was reported that... The occupants of a white van were seen speeding off from the scene after the victim was discovered. Police are appealing to members of the public who may have any information that can assist with their investigation into this matter to contact the police at Crime Stoppers 328 TIPS. That's 328-8477. And finally, in this segment, the traffic fatality count for New Providence is up two notches following two separate traffic accidents, with one of them occurring in the early hours this morning and the other on Saturday, which claimed the life of an American male tourist. In the latest fatality, police reports indicate that sometime around 1.35 a.m. this morning, while in the area of East Street, the male victim, who was driving a white-colored Honda Civic traveling south along East Street, lost control of his vehicle and collided into the wall of a business establishment. As a result, he received major injuries. EMS personnel called to the scene confirmed that the male had succumbed to his injuries. 
Prior to this traffic accident, sometime around 3 p.m. on Saturday, a male tourist from Miami, Florida, believed to be in his mid-20s, died as a result of an accident near the Arawaki Police Station. According to reports, the victim was a passenger on a green 2019 four-wheeler driven by a female when she lost control and overturned with the male passenger being ejected, resulting in serious injuries. Emergency medical services personnel transported the victim to hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. A 42-year-old female resident, also of Miami, Florida, is assisting police with this investigation. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.